Built in 1957, the Tropicana Hotel and Casino is one of the most iconic properties on the Las Vegas Strip. But this time has come to an end. Well, not just yet. We still got a little bit more time to give it one last go around before the place closes permanently on April 2nd. So let's go. When this place opened in the 50s, some very big names were involved with this place in its early years. Some involved in illegitimate activity, but some were famous in the world of acting. So when it comes to like the mafia connections of this place, Frank Costello is a person who was involved in the early years, and he was also uh, had ties to Meyer Lansky. Now Frank Costello eventually had a hit put on him, and he did survive that hit, but he was involved in the early years of this property. And one really popular actress at the time who performed here in the first year it was open was Rhonda Fleming. So she was very popular during the 1950s and she later went on to work with other popular people in the acting world like Burt Lancaster, Kirk Douglas, and Ronald Reagan who were popular during the 1940s and 1950s. Welcome to the deluxe non-smoking king room here in the club tower at the historic Tropicana Hotel and Casino. So I got this room on a weekday, a Monday, one of like the last few days before the prices really jump before they're getting ready to shut down the property. I got it for $79 listed, but plus the $37 resort fee, the tax on the resort fee, all the fees and everything else combined, $131.00. 52 cents on a Monday here at the Tropicana. So one cool thing though, they do give you a discount for the massage if you wanna to go to a glow spa here. So I've been there before, we'll talk about that once we get down there. But the room's about 350 square feet according to the front desk when I checked in here. So plenty spacious actually, I was surprised how spacious it was once I got in here. So plenty of counter space, sizable TV. They do give you one, two waters, which is cool because it's kind of a rarity on the strip. So to find that here is cool. Desk space with a couple of chairs, another chair off to the side. They do have the uh, dual end tables with the lamps, with your phone to call to the desk. I got a view of the airport here. I'm up on the 16th floor, so I can see right out here all the Spirit Airlines uh, flights getting ready to uh, blow up. I mean, take off. So I got a view of the airport. We're gonna go check out the bathroom. First time here in this restroom. I have not looked in here at all. I brought my light. All right, my light's not working. We're gonna have to just use our regular eyeballs. Decent sized counter space, toilet. Let's lift. Looks clean. Looks clean. Yeah, no funky stains, no funky smell. So far, so good here in the bathroom. Shower, this is pretty sizable. Shower and tub combo, dang. Do they have bigger showers and tubs back in the day in Vegas? Some parts of this room are a little dated. You can see some wear and tear right here, but you know what? Places built in the 50s, that is uh, kind of to be expected. It's a historic property. So one thing I noticed about my room key when I was getting ready to use it is with a sticker on it. A Tropicana sticker, and I was kind of wondering why that is. You might be able to barely see right behind it, it says Legends. They used to have a show here at the Tropicana, I think closed a little over a year ago, but they're still using the room key <laughs> with the show on there. They're just covering it up with a sticker. Hey, it works. In case you guys are wondering what the table minimums are closing out on a weekday here at the Tropicana towards the end of their operation, the table game area is small anyway, but all they've got going is heads up hold'em for a $5 minimum, several blackjack tables where it's as cheap as a $10 minimum, double zero roulette is a $10 minimum, and that's it. The craps table, not even open right now. So as you guys can see behind me, the high limit table area here at Tropicana already closed. So this section's already closed. Other areas throughout the property already closed. Some of the food, restaurant, lounge options like that are already shut down as well. So it's pretty obvious if you're gonna be coming here, you know, towards the end of this time that certain things they've already just stopped operation completely. I don't think they need this sign anymore. Pretty sure at this point it can go. Okay, 
Let's get some gambling in and see if we can get a last minute win before they close this place. I'm gonna take two $50 bills, put them here in this high limit top dollar machine, and let's see if we can get some money before we go. So I'm gonna go $5 denom, two credits, 10 bucks a spin. Let's go. Wow, so far, so terrible. Hey, good timing. Just won 50 bucks. All right, I quit. Ah, uh, here we go. That's how you walk away a winner. Now let's go play this. <laughs> so I'm gonna keep my $100 that I started with and just take 10 and throw it in the bubble craps machine. $3 minimum bet. I forgot my rewards card, so I'm not gonna get any room comps sent to me anytime soon, but you know what? I think I'll survive. So $3 minimum. Uh, let's see, I'm gonna go don't pass. Against myself, here we go. Two. Two cups, there we go. One, three bucks. Let's try it again. Just gonna keep it against myself. Four. I, let's do this. Don't forget your odds. 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 Don't forget there we go. Look at that. Look at that. 16.50. Cash out. <sighs> winner, winner, winner. Here at the Tropicana before they close. So I'm going to go ahead and take that same $10 bill, put it in here to play some double zero roulette. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm used to actually playing at the live table. It's my first time ever playing this. So let's see. Three dollar minimum bet. Let's go. Three bucks here, three bucks here, three bucks here. And... Oh! Alright. I'm at ten still. I'll give it one more spin. I kind of just want to leave right now while I'm ahead. But even if I lose on this, I'll still be ahead. So, let's try it again. Let's see if we can get a high number. All right, well, you know, I broke even again. I'm just gonna say forget it. I'm out. I'm gonna take my $19.50 that I won here, and I'm taking it with me. That works. Well. I'm extremely confident that nobody is going to miss the ATM fee, the resort fee, and the taxes and all the other fees that go along with staying at many Vegas hotels and casinos in recent years. I know now in Las Vegas, you're used to giant resorts and massive ceilings, but uh, back in the day, they used to build those ceilings kind of low. Normally the pool here at Tropicana would be open, but because they're going to be closing at the very beginning of April, they're not. So I can't remember how many years ago it's been since I first came out here, probably at least six years ago. And I remember being impressed with this area then, when you came out to the pool area here, saw how nice it was, all the greenery, the waterfall. There's a lot more pool area than you would think, but it's closed off so you can only see what you can from here and from inside the casino. But you can tell at this point, 
you know, they're letting it go, right? This area that's all reserved for wedding chapels, not well maintained right now because of the situation. This waterfall that used to be running right here is off, so now you just have the water sitting here stagnant. But obvious signs that the show is over for Tropicana. In addition to being one of the oldest casinos in all of Las Vegas, but specifically here on the Strip, when the Tropicana opened in 1957, it was a $15 million property. And at that time, it was by far the most expensive. And what they did at that time was they built 300 rooms with two wings that were three stories each. So you can actually see right here, one, two, three story buildings. So it started off a lot smaller than what we see today with these two additional massive towers. Now today in Las Vegas, this on the strip, this is considered one of the smaller properties. But at that time, for the amount of money that was spent on it, this was essentially considered to be the crown jewel. And it was actually referred to as the Tiffany of the Strip. I'm glad I took a moment to stop and just look around a little more, because as I look at this and I see the three stories here, just look how different it is than so many of the mega resorts you see today. See how every single one has its own balcony with a sliding glass door? Like everything about it just looks much older than what you see today. So in this case, older meaning more historic and the designs that were just more common during the time. Night and day difference between the mega tower where you come down the elevator and you know, there's like a film over it. So it's actually kind of hard to see out, but it's there to help, you know, block the sun in the summertime and that sort of thing. But you can really see like night and day between the older and the more modern way that these hotels were built. One thing I want to recognize real quickly here, they're doing the Tropicana that's really cool is they're using the marquee here to display a thank you message to all of their employees. So whether they've been here five years or less, all the way up to 50 plus years, they are all getting their names displayed on this board. It's hundreds of employees have contributed to this place over the years. One of the coolest pieces of history here at the Tropicana is this stained glass that you're looking at. This artwork here is 4,000 square feet that was built in 1979. It goes right over the entire table game area. It's right next to the entrance as you come in from the Las Vegas Boulevard. And when it was built in the 70s, it was estimated to be about a million dollars. Today, from what I read, that'd be about $4.2 million or so would be the price tag on this. I was trying to research what they're gonna do with this glass, because I know a lot of people would hate to see it get demolished and hate to see it go to waste. I have not heard anything concrete yet, but hopefully at least some of this is saved for when the Oakland A's build their stadium here. On the mezzanine level here is where you find the entrance to the Laugh Factory. I came here and saw a show probably at least six years ago. And it was cool because they had, you know, two comedians start the night off. And then they had the headliner that night. So it was a fun night. When I came into the entrance, I gave the um, greeter at the front, I gave him 20 bucks. He put me in a nice VIP booth. So that was cool to do. But Laugh Factory, this place will be missed. I have memories of coming here to this place, seeing shows, or seeing a show, seeing several comedians, laughing, enjoying it. But it will be no more. So the spa and the weight room here is run by a company called Glow. They're a third party company. I got to try this place for the first time a few days ago. Came in for one hour massage. The one hour massage itself was plenty good. The amenities are pretty decent here. They're gonna be higher than you would see like at a um, other property that's more mid tier like Sahara or El Cortez, but they're not gonna be as good as like you're gonna find out one of the major resorts here on the strip like uh, Resorts World or something like that. So they do have a nice waiting area. You can lounge to wait for your massage. They do have a steam room, shower area, bathroom has a fair amount of um, supplies that you could need. Weight room, small, but it does have what you need for the equipment and that sort of thing. And it's got a pretty cool view overlooking the pool area. So this was a, um, I don't know how long Glow was running it, but this is the spot in the weight room that's no longer gonna be around. This is a cool spot to work for a lot of people coming for conferences. During the daytime, you can see another section of the pool. You can actually see out into the strip a little bit, see MGM, New York, New York, Aria, Park MGM. So this won't be here anymore either. But let's talk about a few things that we know or also things that we can kind of speculate or have an idea of what could be happening going forward. So we know the Oakland A's are gonna be moving to Las Vegas and they plan to build a stadium here that they want to be ready in 2028. So they wanna build a ballpark here and also have a hotel on the property as well with the remaining area that they have left. What that's exactly gonna look like, we don't know. 
I know some people have been curious about a demolition or a implosion, this would be a better term to put it, implosion for this place. That seems unlikely because a place this old built in the 1950s, there's a good chance this place has asbestos. And I was already kind of suspicious of that to begin with, but I did talk with a staff member who did say that part of the entire property has been closed for years because of asbestos. So the chance they're just going to implode that into the air are unlikely. So there's a good chance they're gonna just piece by piece take this down and it's probably not gonna be your traditional kind of implosion. As far as the stained glass, the 4,000 square feet of that, we don't know. I'm hoping that at least part of that also gets maintained, whether it's over at the uh, Neon Museum, whether it's somewhere else, because um, that would be unfortunate to see that artwork that's been here for decades uh, go to waste. So those are some of the things that we know that's happening with the changes here and other things that are just kind of speculative. Good morning, everyone. Uh, just finished putting that uh, nice big tub and shower to work. Shower head was kind of low and I almost hit my head on it. But uh, that might be the biggest bathtub so far I've seen in a standard room um, here on the Strip and maybe all of Vegas. But anyway, nonetheless, it worked out well. So, I mean, to wrap things up for you guys, you know, this is a little bit different than a lot of the other hotel stay videos I do because even the Mirage... When that was closing down, it was really just transitioning to Hard Rock. But this place is going to be gone. I mean, just completely demolished at some point for the Oakland A's to, um, you know, have their stadium built here. So I do think it's really cool that the ownership and the management use the marquee out front to, um, you know, thank the employees who've been here, whether they've been here for um, a short time or they've been here for 50 plus years. I think that's really cool. I didn't um, interact with as much of the staff here as I normally do because this was just really going around and just trying to show you guys one last look at the property. I mean, most, um, I mean, pool was closed. Several other places on property are closed. I mean, they're just, yeah, it was a little bit different than my normal kind of video. But nonetheless, I did enjoy my stay here. I'm glad I'm going to have this video for, you know, myself and for you guys as well as a memory um, going forward of this place. So, hey, Tropicana, thank you. Appreciate you. You've been a, a staple here in the Las Vegas area for decades. And this place will be missed. But as we know here in Las Vegas, you know, that's kind of the history of this place, right? We have buildings that we keep up for decades that are popular. And then, you know, they get brought down. Something else new comes in because Vegas is always reinventing itself. So thank you guys for watching. That's it for this video. I'm Jacob. This is my life in Vegas.